All right, welcome to another episode from the Chart Reader. So it seems like the viewers are liking what I've been doing. So I'm going to continue by starting us at the fireplace. I'll talk about a couple dates. Obviously, the Canadian date just passed. There's some excitement about tomorrow. Obviously, 420 is around the corner. And then we'll get into the technicals themselves, right? So um, my plan is to look at Tilray alone. We'll cover CGC and ACB together, and then I'll cover the others on their own chapter, um, High Tide, SNDL, and uh, MSOS, right? So um, a lot going on on this chart right now, and I, I said it earlier on the on the chart reader's Discord, okay? We're, we're in an interesting market right now. And when I say interesting, I mean a bad market. And I, I often feel, and it, it's, 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 how do I word? My rules don't work well when the markets aren't good, okay? So the S&P 500 is definitely not looking pretty, all right? The Dow Jones Industrial, DJ30, is not looking pretty, all right? Again, we're talking about farming. We're talking about selling things in a physical store. There's nothing online. There's no e-commerce. I care about the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones when I'm looking at this sector, right? But um, Tilray ain't doing too good, but clearly CGC, even ACB was popping off nicely, right? So I can't tell if these are going to be leading the, the, the Tilray recovery for the rest or if this is kind of an outlier, right? So, so those are going to be my general thoughts, okay? Um, I'll talk about the 419 date in the U.S. for the bill. Obviously, I talked about 420 earlier, and then, um, yeah, I think that's a good intro right here. So before we go any further and I give you more of my thoughts and opinions, what are we going to do? Same thing we always do, right? We'll take a look at the daily and the weekly to see how these things are setting up short term. We have our five moving averages, there are horizontal support and resistance lines that I do draw manually myself. And then when we are done up here, we'll use the MACD, RSI, and volume as our lower indicators. Hey, really quickly, if you can please subscribe to this channel, share this video online with your friends, comment good or bad if you disagree. Look, anything you can do helps so, so much with these YouTube algorithms, but for real, just being here and giving me your time, oh, I am so, so grateful for it, all right? So again, before we get into the charts, I want to take us into the fireplace. Let's talk a little bit um, fundamental thoughts and some dates. So I really want to talk about this Canadian date that has now come and gone, right? So on the 16th, there was a real big, I'll call it a financial review. I don't know how else to, to summarize it, right? But there were some proposals. There was just a review of the actuals. It was an important day for the country, okay? And part of that important day included a potential um, improvement to the taxes for a number of substances, cannabis being one of them, okay? Unfortunately, what we were hoping for didn't happen. And I'm gonna say two things to that. Number one, I think it not happening unfortunately makes a lot of sense in this sector, all right? And it's why I always come into most things very, very negative and pessimistic because I think I would rather be pleasantly surprised on good news than have the rug pulled on me when I'm hopeful for, for you know, the other outcome, right? Like, I, I know, I mean, I saw it in the comments. I saw a lot of people agreeing. Don't feel bad if you thought it, right? Like, again, we're here to learn and, and, and get better, right? And I know a lot of people believe that this tax reform was going to happen in Canada, right? There were a number of articles. There were a number of important Canadian political figures that people were referencing that really made it sound like there actually might be a change, right? And again, it's so frustrating for what feels like a decade of hope and letdown, right? And again, that just goes back to what I was just saying. I have to assume, it's like I say on the technical charts, right? I have to assume bad until I really see a reason to think otherwise, all right? So the Canadian hope didn't happen, all right? We now turn to the US and tomorrow on 419, I'm actually gonna jump to the Discord real quick because there was a good thing shared on the Discord. Give me one second, please. Right here. So there is hope that there is going to be a new bill 
all right? And it's going to include banking reform. A lot of almost what I just talked about on the Canadian side, all right? Again, I have said it so many times, right? Let's go back to the fireplace. The rules are not set up for the sector to win, okay? From the tax issues that they put on the companies themselves, from the tax issues that make it as a customer feel really silly to go into these legal shops when I can just go to a number of illegal places and get the same, if not better quality for much, much like the rules are, there's no intrastate like get out of here i've said this so many imagine if apple could only sell phones in california because that's where their headquarters are and they need to set up other headquarters in every 50 states to, in, in each of the 50 states to like sell like get out of here right like that is that is the complete opposite of the free market that we live in but hey we're not here to complain we're here to play the realities of today and then like i said expect things to change when they give us a reason otherwise all right so i don't know what to think about that that senate bill okay there is a rumor and believe me you've heard me say it all the time rumors are beautiful right throw the rumors in the pot and let that thing mix and burn and and let's cook it up right like i love rumors my concern just is schumer's all talk it's just We've, we've heard Schumer say this, we've heard Schumer say that, we're looking at nothing different, right? So um, I, I find it a little hard to, to sit here and, and, and believe, all right? Um, I think it's interesting to see CGC and ACV go because I think on a normal situation, I would kind of think to myself, oh, maybe there's a reason to believe, right? But yeah, I'm just, I'm not sure. Let me know if you disagree, right? Again, I'm... I wish there were more reputable headlines, right? Look, this is not a bad publication. I think it's obviously a very one-sided one, right? I would love like a CNN or like a Bloomberg or something else, right? Something a little more, I'll use the word neutral very, very loosely, right? But yeah, something not like sector specific and sector favorable, right? I think that maybe would be a little more impactful, but yeah, I'm, I'm here, I think not assuming, but let me know if you disagree, please, all right? The last thing to talk about is 420. Look, 420 is on Saturday. 420 isn't a trading day, right? Now, maybe, maybe someone can argue there's a little bit of a rumor and maybe it's worth holding on Friday because we don't know what the rumor of Saturday is going to be. Again, I don't think I can buy that. I don't, I don't think I can put my hope on, on the Christmas of the sector and call it a day, right? So let me know if you disagree about tomorrow and Saturday, right? 419 and 420 are supposed to be big catalyst days. There was something, and I can't think of it top of my head, someone mentioned a May date, and I apologize for not being a little more prepared on this. I will for sure get it and, and mention it on the next one, but there's supposed to be something that happens in May, and I think early May if I'm not mistaken, but again, I'll, I'll, I'll validate that and, and mention it on the next one, all right? So those are my dates and thoughts. Let me know if you disagree. Otherwise, 833 is our transition, and let's come into the technical. So I want to start with Tilray, okay? You know I always do. Tilray will be its own, um, its own chapter here. And I'm, I'm not entirely happy with what I'm seeing, all right? I think that's, that's the easiest thing to say, all right? I am looking at a stock that gapped down from earnings, and the earnings reaction is continuing, all right? Someone made a really funny comment about not liking the word death cross. Believe me, I don't make up these words, right? I just, I just teach what I know, right? So a death cross is when a smaller one goes under the bigger ones, okay? We love golden crosses when the small one goes above them, okay? But the eight has now death crossed, one, two, three, four. It has death crossed every single one. All right. And in the back of my head, because again, the eight, this is just simple math, right? Eight moves almost three times faster than the 20, right? The 20 looks like it's getting ready to curve down and it's probably going to make, again, this one was more drastic because it was a lot quicker, but yeah, that looks about three times slower and I can see the same decline happening there. Right now, 
I'm, I'm seeing the same thing that happened on the last earnings. Now, remember, this is a thing that commonly happens, right? You go away from the eight, you come to the eight. You go away from the eight, you maybe break the eight and get to the 20, but lo and behold, you stay under both, right? We've gone really far from the eight. We've made our way a little bit back. We're kind of going away from it. I, I can see us just doing this back and forth up down and remember, there are moments of recovery, sure, but it's all that sustained downtrend until some better things happens with the moving averages, right? So I still got to believe we're coming to 162, all right? I would love to see something different. Believe me when I say that. I can't think anything differently until we're at least over the eight. But lo and behold, you know I'm not going to think sustainable. I'll probably just kind of think a, a momentary recovery, right? Um, our MACD is definitely in the negative. It kind of looks like the divergence is calming on both, right? Like it was really steep. We were going down hard. It kind of looks like maybe it's going to want to curve. Oh yeah, we're in live trading hours, by the way. So you might see alerts. You're going to see percentages and candles move, right? You know, I like to make my videos when candles close, but I just, um, busy day, sorry. So I'm not buying this yet, okay? I, I think there is still a lot to happen. It is going to be very, very hard to get over $2. These two lines are, are look, this is the last and toughest, right? These two are, are their own little monsters. And when they're that close together, oh, that's not a good thing at all, all right? So I think two is gonna be very, very difficult if we make that recovery, but I think 160 is a little more realistic than two in my head, all right? So Tilray, I am seeing a sustained downtrend holding. And again, what's making things worse is the S&P 500 is not gonna save it. The Dow Jones isn't gonna save it. They're both on their own little struggles right now, right? And when the oceans are hard, when the oceans are, are just choppy and big wave, I don't know if you watch Deadliest Catch or not, right? But we've seen those, if you do, those big, big waves that they gotta stop fishing. They just gotta go inside and just, you know, it's pounding the boat way too hard right that's 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 what i see happening right believe me i'm a crackhead gambler this is so boring for me and i even said there was the last thing i said on the discord all right and it's it's true even for me look my boy xmas right xmas holiday he's up 60 percent. it was 20 not that long ago i love that he's crushing i really do but truth be told I'm trying to ignore all the gains from others. I know strategy is 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 tough in these weird markets and and you know look I love when people bank it almost makes me feel like I do I'm telling you right like don't don't you know but um yeah that's, that's, just, that's just my little extra rant right there. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know your opinions, even if you disagree. So I'm going to chapter CGC and, um, and ACB together. So look, these two are moving well. And um, hey, really quickly, I'm so sorry. If you can please subscribe, if you can please share this video, it does wonders with the algorithms. Um, I really can't tell what tomorrow wants to do, okay? So this whole day, I, um, let's just, I, can, I think I should be able to quickly flash a couple thoughts. So, you know, I saw ACB, I didn't understand why. I thought ACB might try for 855, but there was a big wall. My, I called it 777, but um, yeah, it's still battling this 7778, right? Again, it's peaking up, it's peaking down, but what am I seeing on CGC? Look, eight in the 20. It is, it is the same lines I was talking about on Tilray. It's the same lines we're talking about now. Look, when the two lines are your friends and you're over them, it's a great thing, okay? When you fall under them, it becomes a questionable thing, all right? And now really what I got to figure out, and look, I think this is so 50-50. That's kind of playing into this. Look, we lose the eight. And you know, we get a good string of a couple candles, but even in that string, there's only really one good candle and a bunch of basically dojis, right? We then fall under the 20. You can argue that none of those three were good candles, right? So in this entire string, look, no one wants to go from almost 10 to under eight. Oh my gosh, no one wants to go from eight to six, let alone nine to six, right? That's horrible. But none of those were really hardcore candles, I guess. And look, some of this is hindsight and, and you know, again, it's, 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 it is what it is, right? But 
I can't tell. I really can't. I'm telling you. I'm, I'm even when I look at my personal stacks, right? I again, I move my money on the one and the two. Chart readers, what we're looking at is a, is a is a simple but deadly system, right? But man, I don't know what to think about tomorrow. I don't know if we're gonna get over both and actually make another run to ten. Because look, green, 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 red, 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 green, 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 green. I say it all the time on videos, right? But Oh man, I can't ignore a struggling S&P 500 and Dow Jones, right? It's the same worry I had in Tilray. I can't not say it on CGC just because I see one big candle, right? So my thoughts for tomorrow are essentially, look, if we can at least hold where we're at and close over the eight, maybe there's a shot that we go here, okay? Because yeah, that's still a positive MACD. That's obviously a really low RSI that just reset from the highs of 90 plus, right? So to go from 90 to 40 up, that's that makes sense in most times, right? Volumes back at the 50 day average, again, that's, that's a good thing. And we still have what? Two hours of trading left, right? So yeah, we're probably gonna break that line, right? Normally, I'm telling you, in a normal good market condition, I'd feel more comfortable, but my rules just don't work that well. And there's, there's a lot of hesitation behind it, right? Personally, I, and I'm not in this. I hope you've made good money. Believe me when I say that. Personally, I would bank today and I would re-enter tomorrow if it shows it wants to go up because I don't know if we're coming back. That's too low here. We can easily come down to 730 tomorrow maybe 725. I can for sure see that happening. All right. That's not too bad, right? Um, we didn't get to the 200. I don't know if I'm going to call that a 200 average bounce or simply, like I said, never confirmed and gone back up. Overall, I'm a little bit lost for thoughts on what's going to be sustained. Let me know what you think. All right. So with that, it's almost the exact same thoughts on ACB. Okay. This you can argue was a little bit more of a stronger technical recovery. This was a doji on an important line. You can basically say, even if I didn't draw this line, you can basically call that a doji on the 20 moving average too, right? So it actually kind of looks like the 20 did a technical bounce right here, right? Again, we fall under the line, but none of those are, are big confirmation candles, right? So maybe, maybe ACB and CGC are a little bit foretelling of the next stocks I'm about to talk about, right? Because I've been echoing this. The Tilray earnings said nothing bad about any other stock. It's not like in the middle of Tilray's earnings it said, you know what, listen, despite all this stuff, I really don't like ACB, CGC, high tide, S and and blah, 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 right? Like, no, that, that's not how it happened. When the, sec, when the king goes down, the sector follows, right? January 9th, you can see that's where the last Tilray earnings was. And this thing actually went down pretty hard. All right, so far it's at least doing better. There was no momentary recovery. Well, I guess there was, but it was obviously almost a month after, right? This one happened a lot quicker, which is, hey, at least a decent improvement, right? So again, MACD, RSI, and volume look good, right? Like normal market conditions. I would say this is hungry and wants to go here. I'm just, I'm just a little bit worried, right? This isn't the normal condition. So let me know your thoughts. Let me know your opinions. Even if you disagree, let's move into the next batch, all right? And I think the theme for me on this next set is, look, nothing is horrible on these. Nothing is as good as CGC and ACB. And I'm not sure what to focus on. Do I think that these are about to follow the good ones? Or do I think those good ones are kind of an outlier and we're still just in this like ripple effect? Okay, so that's that's the working thought here. Really quickly, if you can please subscribe, if you can please share the video. Oh, it does wonders with the algorithms, all right? So um, yeah, for, 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 let's start it with this. I'm gonna literally repeat the same thing I just said and I apologize if you're hearing this again. There was nothing bad connected to any of these stocks during that the Tilray video, or during the Tilray earnings, right? Nonetheless, on oh look, this one didn't. This one actually went up on the last Tilray earnings. So this one is actually doing a little bit worse than last time. That's a little bit interesting right there. Um, 
nonetheless, right, my, 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 my comment from the last section was, hey, look, they're actually bouncing on the 20 moving average, right? Just in case you fast forwarded. ACB is the better example. We use the 20 like a champion, right? CGC did fall under, it never really confirms, and I wasn't sure if it kind of used those lines. You can kind of call it a technical move, right? But nonetheless, high tide hasn't yet. It's, it's holding the line, and hey, believe me, holding the line isn't bad. I'm happy when you're holding or above those two lines, right? Um, my concern simply is that's a bad gap down. If we lose the 20, you lose this, you're coming to this, right? And, and that wouldn't be a pretty drop. That's about a 10% drop right there, give or take, right? Losing 20 cents and coming to two-ish, right? Um, but hey, those last two did it, and what... I, I don't know what to think is, is really the truth of it, right? Like my issue is the markets aren't doing well. I'll quickly flash S&P 500. I think that's good enough. Um, when the markets aren't doing well, it, it, it's harder to, to, to believe because again, the waters are so hectic. It, 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 it is what it is, right? So I don't know. And really, I wouldn't believe until we're over 235. I think 236 and higher is a really good safe, I don't want to use the word safe because you know nothing's safe, right? But yeah, if we can get over that, I will start to think, you know what, this is ready to mimic CGC and, and ACB. Otherwise, honestly, I can see us just kind of living in those in this channel right here between 250 and 2. Um, as long as we're over most of the moving averages, you know I'm happy, right? So. Um, that's kind of my general thought here, and I think roughly the same on the other ones, right? So SNDL, oh, SNDL doesn't look as pretty. I thought it did look a little prettier, but same basic comment, actually. Look, the drop from the eight to the 20 wasn't pretty, right? No one wants to see that, but it's not like we saw two big bad candles that made me say, oh, oh, right? Yesterday wasn't good, and today's not quite good enough but there's still no crazy confirmation that we've lost it both, right? I did mention that SNDL kind of, you know, I didn't like what happened after the last earnings, right, from Tilray. Ready to break them all and fly, Tilray day, and for no reason we're back under them all, right? So there's a little bit of me that's wondering if we're going to kind of echo that, but... ACB and CGC, they were able to hold the lines and go, right? CGC actually fell between below both of these and got a little closer to both of these. And you know what I mean? So I can't really tell if this is going to mimic the move up or basically just kind of live horizontally a little bit longer, right? I think overall, neither is beautiful, but as long as we're over, most of the moving averages just keep me over, what is that, 160-ish? Yeah, 165. I'm relatively happy here, all right? So like I said, same kind of thought as high tide and then lastly, MSOS. Again, I wish we were going up and breaking 1050. Believe me when I say that, right? But you know, the moving averages are holding. We're at the 50, we're, we're definitely under the 20 and you know, we're, we're trying to struggle. But the end, end of the day, the 10, I mean, the, the 100 kind of did, like it's, it's one of those things where the market just isn't that good. And this specifically is a US ETF, right? So you're gonna want the markets to do well for an ETF to do well, but Dow Jones, S&P 500 struggling a bit, right? So um, there is a, so there's a, a horizontal support and a moving average basically at the same place. So this should be a good, strong line. Um, I would say, again, no one wants to fall from 9 to 750, right? That's not a good thing. But as long as we're over at least that one, you know I'm good. I really hope those three can hold it well. You know what I mean? But for now, I'm going to say it seems like this might want to come to... To 840. I think 840 is a decent assumption. Um, I really wouldn't trust MSOS until we can get over 985. All right. So um, those are my thoughts. Those are my opinions. Let me know yours. And I'm excited to see what tomorrow does. All right. Hey, thank you. Thank you.